another day of confrontation in Istanbul. After hundreds of arrests and injuries on Friday, the police may have hoped the severity of their response would deter any more protests. But not for these crowds marching across the bridges over the Bosphorus. For them, what began as a protest over a park has now taken on a deeper importance. They're now demanding the fall of the government. Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan wants to redevelop the park and says he has no plans to back down. Erdogan's deputy has said the police were wrong to break up the peaceful protest with tear gas. But there are concerns the government has restricted Turkish media from reporting on the protest with the hope of preventing more widespread violence. A look at the capital Ankara on Saturday morning shows that has failed. This is what happened near the Turkish parliament. There are people of all kinds of ideology here together, from all religious sects. But the attitude of the police never changes. I even think it is probably the undercover police that have caused so much debris on the street. The international community has expressed concern at the approach the police are taking. And with both sides showing no sign of backing down, scenes like these might continue for some time to come. Let's uh, find out exactly what's happening. And uh, you can just take a look there. That is the scene uh, right now. These are live pictures uh, from Istanbul. That's where protesters are uh, still out in hundreds, as you can see, out on the streets protesting. And Rauya Rage is uh, following this story for us from Turkey. Rauya, can you hear me? I'm, I, I'm going to have to move. I'm going to have to move. You can probably see, All right, you it can seems probably that... see tear gas. You can probably, you can probably see the tear gas being fired by the police, and the protesters are running in all sorts of directions. It, it happened after thousands of people arrived at the scene here, uh, football fans trying to break the siege of the park, and they actually succeeded. It appeared the police was restraining themselves for a while, but as you see, it took them a few minutes to crack down on the protesters again. This is one of the largest groups we've seen arrive in the past two days, and certainly this is one of the harshest responses we have been seeing. Rauya, I'm going to keep going with you for a few moments, even though it seems to be a bit of a dangerous situation. We can see right now, uh, for our viewers just joining us uh, on Al Jazeera, uh, this is the scene uh, right now in Istanbul, in Turkey, where there seems to be a security operation uh, underway right now. Police uh, seemingly firing uh, tear gas at uh, protesters. Rauya, are you still with us? And if you are, uh, where are the protests uh, running to? Just uh, describe again to us the scene that, that you are seeing. They're running from the direction of Gezi Park into Istiklal Avenue, one of the sites, one of the main sites of confrontations for the past few days. They are being dispersed in all, <coughs> in all sorts of directions. All right. In the side street off of the square. All right, so. This is the scene right now in Istanbul. Rauya, one more question to you, if I may. Is this likely to uh, bring more protesters out on the streets? We can imagine that this is going to anger them even more, this harsh police response, because the police have been criticized for using uh, brut brutality against uh, the demonstrators. Indeed, for days now, rights groups have been saying the police tactics have been quite heavy-handed. It's being described as a zero-tolerance policy. Even the Prime Minister today said the use of pepper spray will be investigated. And it's very interesting that we actually saw today the arrival of plainclothes police, uh, including female officers carrying batons. All right, so so Rauya, certainly the police now is trying to... Rauya, let me leave it there with you uh, for now uh, so that uh, you can uh, get out of those uh, uh, protests just for a couple of minutes and we'll come back to you, I'm sure, later on in the bulletin.